All right, so last year, anyone who remembers walking with us last year, what we did was release a balloon, all our balloons, for those that are suffering in silence, in memory, in thoughts and prayers to them. But since last year, actually the day I got home after this and realized we released all these balloons and you can't release balloons anymore. I know. Did anyone hear me say that? So this year, I'm going to release one balloon. So I'm only kind of breaking the law one time. So any elected officials and police, please close your eyes. But what I'll ask you to do is all raise your hand in the air and we're sending our prayers like you just don't care. Like you just don't care. And we're going to send this on up. We're going to start our presentation and then lunch. And to start us off, we have our very own Brockton Council on Aging Swinging Singers. Well, thank you for that applause. That's very nice. I just want to let you know that we're going to sing a couple of songs that everybody knows. So make sure you join in with us, okay? We're gonna go with the, the key of C, okay? So we're going a cappella. Oh, we're gonna sing from here. Oh, thank you. You got that? You sure? Which one you doing? The grand old track, the high flying track, and forever each may wait. You're the emblem of the land I love, the home of the free and the brave. Every heart beats true, for the red, white, and blue, ever, ever, a ghost of In addition, we were able to get a banner here in front of the Council on Aging, and if you go out Father Kenny to Maine, you'll see it up on our pole. So we're going to keep that up there as long as we can to let people know that they certainly can come to us or reach out if someone is in an abusive situation. So that was really exciting. And I have to say thank you to Old Colony Elder Services. Thank you very much, Lynn Smith. Yes. And, it, and Larry Rowley, DPW, and Nick, yes. yes. Yes, thank you. In addition, we have something else new this year. Barbara Bartone from Old Colony Elder Services put together a collection of slides that go back five years. Four years. This is the fifth year. This is our fifth year. So back to day one when we started our march, 
and we have it playing out in the fireplace room, and it's really kind of cool, and you did a fabulous job so far, but thank you very, very much. She's sitting on the floor. Just like the I have to also say thank you very much to Brockton Community Access, who's always here, always has our back, supports us. Another way for us to get word out to our seniors at home that love watching cable, um, and they certainly will get the message if they weren't here to be here today. So Mark, thank you so very much, and your crew. Um, and also, obviously, thank you to each and every one of you, because this is awesome. We filled the room, it makes my heart feel good. Terry and I had a little moment walking up for the way, <laughs> but we're okay now. So um, thank you very much for being my partner in crime. We work well together with the crew that worked hard on this event. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce Mayor Carpenter. How come he gets a tambourine? I didn't get a tambourine when my was close. That's a problem. All right, thank you, Janice. Hey, great to be here with everyone today. The weather was a little bit better this year, huh? Yeah. See, this is like the first time we've ever had weather like this, I think, right? At least the last couple of years have been rainy. Uh, thanks so much for the great turnout today. So I have a proclamation to read, uh, and I'm going to present it to Janice and the folks here at the Council on Aging. Uh, we do truly appreciate all the great work they do with all of you. Um, and it's important for us to recognize uh, Elder Abuse Awareness Month. But I'm just going to tell you a quick personal story real quick. And Janice has been a great help to me. My dad is 90 years old. He's a World War II veteran, and he lives by himself. And he's lived by himself for 35 years. So he is not willing to change his living arrangements. We've tried. He won't let anyone move in, and he won't move out. So, someday, some, someday we're going to have to come up with a new deal. But we're trying to hang in there with him right now, and he's getting a lot of great services of people visiting him, visiting nurses, housekeeping, etc., to help him stay at home. But, you know, as his health has really gone downhill dramatically this past year, it's really caused me to think about how vulnerable he is. You know, he lives a 35-minute drive from here. I can't just run down the street to check on him every minute. So I call him several times a day. Uh, we've got a lot of folks checking on him, but it's just really caused me to really think more about and, and be aware of just how vulnerable many of us senior citizens are, particularly as they get older, and particularly seniors that may be living by themselves. And so, you know, we really have to think about all the different risks that they have from healthcare workers or homemakers coming into the house that may abuse them or steal from them and, or, or financial scams, um, emotional, verbal abuse, physical abuse. There are just so many things that our seniors, you know, that people may attempt to do to my dad today that they would have never tried 20 or 30 years ago. And so I, I, I really think this is just so important that we're all here today and, and trying to make the rest of our city and the rest of our community aware that it takes all of us, all of us, to keep an eye on our seniors and make sure they're not being abused. So thank you so much for being here. I do. So I, she actually called me up to give a proclamation, so not a speech, but I, I had to throw that in. Um, so it is my privilege on behalf of the city to present a proclamation uh, that reads, Whereas Brockton seniors are valued members of society, and it is our collective responsibility to ensure that they live safely and with dignity. And whereas abuse of older people is a tragedy inflicted on vulnerable seniors and an ever-increasing problem in today's society that crosses all socioeconomic borders. It's just as much of a problem here in Brockton as it is in Easton as it is everywhere else. And whereas combating, combating abuse of older people will help improve the quality of life for all seniors across this country and will allow seniors to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and vibrancy of Brockton. And whereas Brockton seniors are guaranteed that they will be treated 
with respect and dignity to enable them to continue to serve as leaders, mentors, and volunteers and important active members of this community. And whereas we are all responsible for building safer communities for Brockton seniors, and whereas the well-being of Brockton seniors is in the interest of all, further adding to the well-being of Brockton. So now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Bill Carpenter, as mayor of the city of Brockton, do hereby proclaim June 15th, 2017, as Elder Abuse Awareness Day. And I urge all residents of the city of Brockton to recognize this day and celebrate all of the great contributions from our senior community. So, Janice, it's my privilege to present this to the Council on Aging and thank you and all of your folks for everything you do every day of the year for our seniors. Thank you. At this time, we have a new neighbor in the neighborhood. I don't know if you folks know, probably most of you do. We have District Attorney Cruz, and we'd like to invite him up to some Thank you, Janice. It's great to be here. Yeah, we're right down the street now. We actually were about a quarter of a mile away. And even though we moved um, probably a quarter of a mile, we actually moved like 75 years. Because the building where we had been for such a long period of time was so dilapidated and falling apart, it was great to move. And it's great to be able to remain here in the city of Brockton so we can continue doing the job that we do every day uh, here over here in Brockton Superior Court and our other courts that are going on right now. And I'm so glad to be here today to help get the remarks out regarding ending elder abuse because we know what goes on many times by individuals who are trying to take advantage of seniors, whether it be you know, by physical abuse, whether it be by financial reasons, they're trying to get a lot of information from you. Remember, people, when people call you up, don't keep your information to yourself, please, because once they get it, it's very difficult to get it back. And I just wanted to briefly say, we just had a, a, a terrible case down the other end of the county where a young person, well, 40-ish, stole over a period of five or six years $1.1 million from a woman with means down there, down the Carver Plymouth area. And he used her, and he lied to her, and he cajoled her, and she continued to give him money that she had. And you know, thank God for her courage and staying strong because you know what? He ended up making that case last a really long time. He was trying to outlive her and trying to make sure she could never be there to prosecute her. But she was there, she stood there, and three weeks ago she was in court and she testified and that guy right now is currently in jail, which is good news, I think, for people that try to do that. So remember, if something happens, if you know somebody that somebody's being taken advantage of, do not hesitate to call the local police. Do not hesitate to call the DA's office. We are there to help you, and we are there to make sure that we can help end elder abuse, as you all are. And I want to thank everybody else. I want to thank the COA. I want to thank the mayor, all the state reps that are here, and all the people who are working hard every day to try to make Brockton and our county of Plymouth a little bit better. And I think they're doing a tremendous job. Thank you all so much. And also, happy belated Flag Day and a happy birthday, belated uh, birthday to the Army also. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me just take a second and acknowledge, and if I miss someone, please let me know. We have Senator Mike Brady. We have State Rep. Jerry Cassidy. State Rep. Michelle Dubois. Who else am I missing? I know I'm going to miss somebody. We have Patrick Hamilton from Old Colony Planning Council. We have and Burgard City Councilor. We had Councilor Lally here. Did he leave? He was a guy in a nice suit. And hopefully that's it. Jack Lally. And at this time, I'd like to introduce from Old Colony Protective Services, Terry Quartz. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It's such a great showing uh, to see all this purple. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So today's World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, June 15th, and where we bring recognition to the victims of elder abuse. Elder abuse is a hidden crime, and any one of our elders could become victims of abuse. Did you know that one in ten Americans are abused, neglected, and exploited each year? Elder abuse can happen in any family, 
and elders that have dementia are 50% more likely to be abused. This is a chance for us to build awareness and educate people about elder abuse. If you see something, report it. If you hear something, report it. If something doesn't seem right, call and consult. Help us to help our elders that are suffering from abuse, neglect, and financial exploitation. We can all help. For Brockton, I want to recognize all the partners in helping with the planning uh, and building awareness for this day. Please hold your applause to the end. The Plymouth County District Attorney's Office, the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, the Brockton COA, the Mayor's Office, the Brockton Police Patrol Association, Roach Brothers, Shaw's, Giorgio's Pizza, and Harbor One Bank. Thank you. I'd like to recognize my staff who do this job every day to ensure that our elders are safe in their homes and free from abuse. It's a difficult job, so please stand up and give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Remember to report concerns to protective services or law enforcement. There has been a change in the reporting process that I just wanted to briefly mention. Now, starting June 30th, all reports will go to centralized intake, which is the 1-800 elder abuse line, and that's going to be across Massachusetts. So I have some information up here, some brochures for you to take on your way out. Um, so if you need to file a report, you're going to be calling that 1-800 number, which is 1-800-922-2275. Okay? Help shine a light on this hidden issue. One person can make a difference. One person can save a life. Thank you for participating in World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. Is Maureen here? Hi. All right. Maureen's going to come up here and just say a couple words for us. Um, Diana DeGiorgi wasn't able to come here. She wasn't feeling well, so Maureen has her written comments that she'd like to share. Thanks, Terry. Hi, everybody. Hi. Everybody looks so great. It is wonderful to see so many people here today and for such an important cause, an important event. Um, and I, I actually have some notes that Diana DeGiorgi put together taken from the um, United Nations website. So, of course, this is a World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It's being recognized around the globe, which is tremendous. Um, and from the United Nations website, virtually all countries are expected to see substantial growth in the number of older persons through 2030. But that's a good thing. But unfortunately, because the numbers of older persons are growing, the amount of elder <coughs> abuse is expected to grow also. Um, while the taboo topic of elder abuse has started to gain visibility across the world, due largely to events like this and advocates like all of you, um, it remains one of the least reported and least investigated types of violence according to national surveys and one of the least addressed in national action plans. So we still have a lot of work to do. Um, because elder abuse is a global social issue which affects the health and human rights of millions of older Americans um, around the world and is an issue which deserves the attention of the international community, the United Nations General Assembly, in its resolution 66127, designated today, June 15th, as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It represents the one day in the year when the whole world voices its opposition to the abuse and suffering inflicted on some of our older elders. The theme for this year, 2017, Understand and End Financial Abuse of Older People, a Human Rights Issue. The 2017 theme underscores the importance of preventing financial exploitation in the context of elder abuse. Um, and that was a great story that, um, Tim Cruz, thank you for sharing that with us. That was very important. Um, older people have the right to a life of dignity in old age, of course, free of all forms of abuse, including financial and material exploitation, which could lead to poverty, hunger, homelessness, compromised health and well-being, and even premature mortality. So thank you for gathering today and marching to show that our little part of the world is in support of increasing awareness that this abuse is real and for working to mitigate and end elder abuse. And right now, I'd just like everybody to just take a minute and pat yourself on the back. <laughs> and thank you very much.
Pat, can you come up here and give a couple words? Sure. We're a team. All right. Okay. Do we do um, the delegation one and we have the governor one? Oh, my Is that God. okay? All right. So, I'll Pat, that one. thank you. Right Pat right was very much instrumental in um, requesting this citation uh, be got from Governor Baker in uh, support and awareness of World and Elder Abuse Day. So, um, in concert with that, we put in the, re the request, and Governor Baker was very nice to respond, and Senator Brady is going to read that, but our whole delegation also put together a citation from uh, the legislature, um, and it's signed uh, by Claire Cronin, State Representative Claire Cronin, State Representative Jerry Cassidy, myself, and soon to be, um, well, soon to be signed by State Senator Michael Brady as well. And it says, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to Old Colony Elder Services in recognition of bringing attention to the very important issue of Elder Abuse Awareness Day. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for good fortune and continued success in all your endeavors. I'd just like to say, that was a lot of words. <laughs> Similar to uh, DA Cruz, quite often as being a city councilor and now as a state representative, I do come in contact with a lot of uh, financial abuse of elderly and senior citizens where someone offers to do work around the house and then they get on the deed and then there's a lot of manipulation. So I'm really happy that that's the focus for this year and I really thank Pat and your whole team, Terry and uh, Janice here at the Council on Aging for all your hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Dubois. Um, and we're very fortunate at the State House. We have a great team, Representative Dubois and Representative Jerry Cass and Representative Claire Cronin and myself. None of us do this work alone, but we're also grateful for all your support because we wouldn't be here without all of your support. And from the bottom of our hearts, we love you all, and we're going to do whatever we can to support you. So thank you on that. Behalf. And, and thank you to our, our crew here with all the uh, elder <coughs> service agencies, especially the Council on Aging, because this is a great Council on Aging, and we're looking to try to get more funding because we know that you need have, have great space needs. And we're honored that this is named after our great friend, Tom Kennedy's mother, Mary Kennedy, the Mary Kennedy Senior Center, because he did a lot of work to get the funding for this as well. I'm not going to read the whole proclamation, but just as it's a proclamation from Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito, and our Secretary of the Commonwealth, William Galvin, and it's a proclamation for Elder Abuse Day, and it's given on behalf of the Governor's Office to all of you here. And again, from the bottom of our hearts, we love you all. God bless you. Good morning, and welcome to World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. It's such a treat. Can you hear me without this? Thank you. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I'm on Facebook, as many of you know. Thank you. And I put up a post this morning saying, please join us for our march for World Out of His Awareness Day. And I, and I had a response to that from um, a friend, in, in fact, the former mayor, Linda Balzotti, and she said, it's such a beautiful day, I'm so happy. This, this uh, event does not have a good history weather-wise. Right. <laughs> so I wrote back and I said, you're absolutely right. Um, it's rained about every year. <laughs> and I said, I think the rain is the tears of the elders around the world that come on this day. I mean, think about it, this is incredible. And maybe, because after eight years, Maybe we're, we're making a break, and so we got a little sunshine today. So. A couple of things. Um, they mentioned that the theme was financial exploitation. Um, and you know, I get a little crazy when I hear statistics because I, I've worked in human service work with battered women and, and rape survivors and elders since 1986. Um, forget the statistics. You have no idea the numbers of people. You have no idea if your neighbor next door is in trouble. 
So we need to stop thinking that we can say one out of 10. Are you kidding me? One out of 10 is so ridiculously low that it's almost embarrassing. So having said that, and because, you know, I'm angry lately about the direction, people work really, really, really hard on this issue of trying to stop abuse. They follow up on reports that we get. And when you have a case, and I don't care if somebody wants to sue me, they can sue me. You have a case of an elder found in a basement, frozen, with sores on her and so deep you can see her bones, and that perpetrator walks out of a courtroom with nothing. There's something wrong in this world. Sorry, folks. There's something wrong when that happens. There's something wrong when the government of the United States owes the Social Security Administration $2.8 trillion, not thousands, hundreds, millions, billions, trillions of dollars. And while they sit there, those damn fools, threatening to cut <laughs> Social yeah. Security, right. stop it. Yeah. So what I want to say to you, <laughs> so I get angry, and I'm so glad I have a place to vent it. Um, <laughs> Abuse is always about power and control, always. No matter what kind of abuse it is. Child abuse, domestic violence, elder abuse. They don't pick on somebody bigger and stronger than them. Remember that. And they don't pick on somebody, generally speaking, who has a lot of friends. So the best thing anybody can do for themselves as you age is do not isolate yourself. Stay close to your friends. I'm here today with my best friend, Carol Hancock. We started first grade together <laughs> in 1946. <laughs> we have raised families. We have, oh, for a couple of years, over the years, gone our step. Never. Here she is today with me, and we'll be here till the end. Let me tell you that. I think she would know if something bad were happening to me. Um, people in isolation have no one looking out for them. So if you've got a neighbor who lives alone, check up on her. You know, you don't want to be nosy, you know, but that's a good excuse to stay out of it too. So we all have to do something. You have a wonderful Council on Aging in this city. Really and truly, the best thing you can do for one another, keep coming here. You know, sing your songs and do the things you because really, we haven't been able to do a lot to stop this. And when your own government is taking your money, we're all in trouble. Thank you very much. Mr. <laughs> 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 Anderson, Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson, we'd like to take this opportunity to recognize you for your contribution and service in assisting our seniors and people with disabilities with our Lifesaver program. This makes a huge difference in trying to maintain their safety in the community. So thank you very much for your contribution. <laughs> for the Brockton Triad. The Brockton Triad continues to assist seniors in the community by programs like the Lifesaver program, as well as their contribution to providing educational information and programs for the seniors here in Brockton. They help bring important issues to the attention of the community and agencies that help make up the Triad group. So thank you to the Brockton Triad for your contribution.
We'd like to take this opportunity to recognize you for your contribution and service in assisting our seniors in all of the communities while in protective services and all other aspects of your life. When I think of Pat Foley, I think of a kind-hearted and warm personality. One of the things I love about Pat is the way she engages people. She has, <laughs> she has so much lived experience and has taught me so much. She continues to be a great advocate and has experience working with domestic violence and sexual assault victims as well as elder abuse. She worked at Old Colony Elder Services for years, helping in protective services as an intake worker. Pat has a wonderful <laughs> sense of humor. She's been a leader and one of the founders of this March Against Elder Abuse. She will continue to be a leader in our community. Thank you, Pat, for all you have done to help our elders. Thank you for all you continue to do, and thank you for all the things that you will do in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Awareness Day. Please help yourself to some cake and some um, additional pizza, and we hope to see you all again next year. Thank you. Thank you.